Hello and what's this week's Devil of the Detail podcast. I'm Rob Parkson and I'm here talking all things. So for a Devils joining me the show this week, as ever, we've got Paul Parkin. How are you doing, Parker, after you're up last week? Are you recovering well? Yes, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, um, yeah, it's all gone well, apparently. We've, it's been a success, so uh, hopefully in the next sort of week or so, I should get my vision back, and uh, and then uh, fingers crossed from there. I, still, I won't have super eyesight, but, you know, it'll, it'll be better than it has been, so that was good. Uh, they, did a, yeah, they did a really good job. Um, but it did mean, obviously, couldn't watch the game on Saturday night, which... I know we'll talk about, but may may have been a blessing. I might, I might have just timed it just right. Um, but yeah, no, all good, all good. Looking forward to this Friday, big, big, big game. Could you know it could turn out to be an amazing night, or it could go, you know, it could end the season. But that's the joy of watching Salford, isn't it? You just don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, good to see that you're recovering. Good to see you protecting it well with that eye patch there. You've not got like a laser beam ready to point it under that, have you? Yeah, like number two from Austin Powers. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, it's uh, just a bit of, bit of protection underneath as well, just in case. Keep the uh, keep anything out, you know, it shouldn't be there. Keep putting the drops in and uh, I'll be fine. I'll be all right next, this time next week, I think. Good stuff. Also joining us, we've got Paul Whiteside. All right, Paul, obviously, um, summer's drifting away. Rain's coming, it's getting cold, getting busy. Yeah, it's not been too bad, not been too bad, Um it's just a travelling about and that that's um, that does me head in a bit. But I had a nice day and um, was it Wednesday? What day we mm. on today? Or what? No, yesterday, Tuesday. I was in Cheadle and um, I, I normally stop off for a brew round there because you're right under the flight path to the airport because I like the airplanes. And I know that the um, the Emirates, the big the big massive Emirates comes in at ten to twelve or about five to twelve. So I was hanging about near the petrol station. It come right in. Right, right over the top of me, so that was a, a good sight. I'd left my phone in the van, so I couldn't get a picture of it. But no, I've been doing all right. I've been working in Warrington today. Um, worked in three houses actually, and they were all Warrington Wolf supporters. And uh, do you know what? It's funny because we were having a chat and that, and um, all three blokes uh, said the same thing to me. They're not bothered about Friday night. It'll be better if Warrington don't finish in the playoffs. And I thought, do you know what? If that's the mentality their supporters and their clubs got, they might go and get lamped against Huddersfield. They, they just mm. They all said the same thing where, yeah, there's it's no point in us finishing it now. And I thought, well, there's probably not a lot of point in us finishing it, but it's pride, isn't it? You want to finish in there and finish top six. So, uh, so yeah, let's roll on roll on Friday night. Let's turn Catalans over. Yeah, it shows how far Warrington's mentality has fallen from being like a team that, you know, wanted to get into a, a grand final, Challenge Cup final. Now they're like, yeah. well, just skip the playoffs, not bothered. That's, that's not a good sign, is it? No, no. Well, a few of them were slagging people off the club. I won't, I won't name names, but um, a lot of unrest there. I think at Warrington. Mm. Um, I think you know they, they pinned a lot of hopes on on Sam Burgess next season, which is a bit of a gamble, really, isn't it? I suppose. But you know, nobody seems to have a good word to say about Daryl Powell. But I, I'm not so sure because everything I've heard about him is that people have all said, um, "Oh, he come in and he upset the apple cart." But it sounds to me like he come in and he wanted to be a bit of a disciplinarian, but. I don't think that's the Warrington way. I think they like it easy, don't they? And a bit of a drinking culture there. And, you know, they're a bit of a fair weather team. And that's that's the impression I've always got about Warrington. But, no, people have, have, from outsiders, they seem to have, have good views on Salford because the, the three men I spoke to today were all the same. They said, oh, we like Salford. We like the club. Paul Roller's a good coach. Wish we had Paul Roller. And so we must be doing something right. And I always feel it's nice when I'm at work and... I talk about Salford to people and they're, they're you know, Wigan supporters, Saints supporters, or whatever. And they always seem to have a bit of respect for us now. And um, I think that's a good thing. It just shows how the club's going in the right direction. So, so yeah, um, I, uh, I, I like my little chats today. And, uh, yeah, keep spreading the word for our, our club. Good stuff. Good stuff. I've got two bits of news uh, that's happened this week. Um, first bit of news, Paul. Uh, I was on BBC Radio Manchester on uh, Saturday night commentating on Salford and Hull Kings Rovers. Dream come true for me after 20 years uh, doing it for Micron Video through the club and the DVDs and then on, on to RDTV. Uh, I got an opportunity and uh, you know, I can't thank BBC Radio Manchester enough for giving me that and uh, commentating on the biggest game of the season as well. It was uh, fantastic. Uh, you were sat next to me, Paul. Uh, nearly had a bit of a moment when uh, Partington nearly went over, <laughs> but it was really good fun. 
I tried to keep signalling to you when there was a few iffy decisions and you didn't, you weren't too sure what the referee had given. So I was trying to help you out, but no, it was great because I, I was listening in, um, just being sat near you and um, you and Chris Charles. I thought were great. I thought it was really good. It was like my own personal commentary on the <laughs> game, and um, no, I enjoyed it. And Sam Luckley's mum was sat a few seats down from us as well. She had a good chat with her, and she was saying at half time about how she listened to the podcast and how he was really good with Sam and that. And I just thought it was really nice of her to to say that. So I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the game and not the result, but I tell you what, I thought your commentary was excellent. Really enjoyed that. I thought the atmosphere, I said that on my video, in my report, it's probably the best atmosphere I've been in this season. I thought the Old Kingston Rovers supporters were outstanding. I thought they made that so partisan and the noise. The atmosphere was just electric, wasn't it, in the, in the stadium on Saturday night? And, um, and yeah, it was a, it's a tough place to go. That I think, you know, anyone who goes there, if they get a home um, game in the playoffs, it's the, the, that crowd gives them a 10 point start, really, with the noise and the ferocity of them. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for the positive comments. Really good. Um, obviously, with the way Super League is going now, Parky, with all the uh, games being on TV, mm-hmm. Sunday might be the end for me, possibly, um, after 20 years. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. We don't really know. But um, it's good that I ended up, obviously, doing BBC Radio Magic, which has been an ambition of mine forever. Yeah, I don't, I don't see why it would be. I don't see it too much changing in that way. I know you're saying about it all being, the, 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 everything will be covered, but I don't really understand the broadcasting side of it in terms of mm. the future. So I, I don't see I don't see what you do is changing too much. In fact, it may just open up more doors, uh, you know, more opportunities. Now, um, you know, hopefully, I mean, I, I like our DTV, but I'd like it to be a bit more kind of, I don't know, fan-focused and so on. I think, I think you doing a commentary on it would be like live if, if that was it's all possible. I know that, again it's all mm. that broadcasting, but that sort of thing would be would be brilliant rather than you know I mean to wait a few days till it comes out or whatever else. But so, yeah, no, I think I think it'll go. I think it'll do well. I think and you know I've listened to obviously I've listened to Paul in the past. Um, I think you both do a, a, an unbelievable job of it because it's I don't. When I sit at home and I watch football, or I even watch Sky and I listen to Bill Arthur and he fumbles along and says some absolute nonsense, and I'm screaming at the teller. It's a lot easier to do when you're sat on your couch. Um, I'm sure when you're there and the pressure's on and the action's happening, to get everything right, to get every player right, and, and you know all the names and everything else, it, it must be chaos. It must be so hard to do. So you know, I don't envy the pair of you when you do it, but you, you, you do it really well. Yeah, just moments like that, Park. You just got to buy yourself about a second to look at the look at the, the player. You know, because sometimes they turn they turn their back on you, so you don't know yeah. who it is if, because they're that far away. So you're just hoping to say something to give them a moment to turn around so you can see the number go. That's then. Plus, sometimes you can tell by the build sometimes who it is. <laughs> but yeah, sometimes it can be it can be difficult. But yeah, loved every minute of it. Big thanks to everyone for for all the positive comments, and we'll see what happens uh, next. Second bit of news. The big bit of news, right? Six, eight weeks ago, um, we mentioned that we had been um, nominated in, uh, well, the British Independent Podcast Awards 2023. We uh, had to provide some highlights and some written stuff to them for them to have a look at and decide if we were in the mix. Parker, right? It's not good news. Because it's great news. Because we've been nominated, shortlisted twice for two awards. So we'll be going to King's Palace, King's Cross, to go and see if we can win. Well, we've been shortlisted for the best independent sports podcast and the best jingle 2023. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that's uh, blown away. Blown away. Unbelievable. How how we manage that? I know. That is absolutely. Well, I, I don't I don't know what to say. To be honest, I think it's very rare and lost for words, as people know. Um, oh my God! Right. Well, Paul. Yeah. I'll, thoughts, I'll think, think some posh out. Thoughts, thoughts while Parky poses himself. Itself. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, that's great. It sounds great. I mean, who's who's voted that then? Like listeners and that are are like no, it's, our. Fellow it's, podcasters. No, it's it's independent. It's podcast uh, professionals in the industry. So right. we basically had to put our highlights together, didn't we? And then they looked, they listened to all the highlights. They have a look at our socials and have a look at what we do. And then we're in the mix. There's seven in the shortlist. 
it's like I said, it's a national uh, competition. Um, so yeah, it's it's an it's an amazing achievement. I can't, you know, I can't thank you know our, our listeners enough for supporting us, you know, through through the years, uh, the club and and the players for engaging with us. Uh, my wife and your two wives for letting us, you know, disappear yeah. for like three hours once once a week. Uh, I want obviously want to thank uh, Mix Podcast Award, the Mix Podcast Group who support me and and give me ideas as well, the technical side of it. But I also want to thank you two guys because without you two, it would just be me chatting nonsense for 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 how long it could last. Because you two bring the the knowledge, you bring the passion. Um, and it's, you know, this podcast, it wouldn't be the same, you know, without you two. Thank you, Rob. Very kind I, of yeah. to say, I mean, I just, I'm just kind of staggered that, you know, like, like you said, we were really just three lads and a laptop, you know, it's kind mm. of, but it's, it, it's that we're such, in so many ways, a small fish in a small pond when it comes to rugby league and to, to solve for rugby league club, which is not a massive name in sporting terms, you know, nationally. To be actually even, you know, in the running for something like this, I mean, that is, that's tremendous. It really is. And, uh, you know, like you've just said there, I mean, if it wasn't for the listeners, it wouldn't be, there'd be no point. We wouldn't be going anywhere. So, you know, thanks to you lot for, for sticking with us every week and, and listening to me moan. I, I, I just, <laughs> yeah, I'm blown away, really. I'm, that's fantastic news. It's, uh, yeah, it's probably cheered me up, that actually. It really has. Yeah. So that's, that's the big news I've been going on about on, on, on our socials. Um, big news for us. And that's uh, you know great. Roll on the uh, the thirtieth of October, and you never know we might be bringing the cup home, Paul. What day is the thirtieth of October? Monday. Do I need to get the day off work then? You will, unless you can okay. find some bellies to fix in King's Cross. Uh, no, nah, book a day's holiday. <laughs> not going, but not doing boils in London, blimey. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have backsies in London. No, no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's all the big news. Uh, now we'll look forward. We'll look back at the Hawkins Rovers defeat. So Salford so Devils were defeated against Hawkins Rovers away from home on Saturday. They went down to defeat 12 points to nil. Uh, Paul, I thought the first half, both sides, you know, really intense, played really well. Um, they went in front after a period of pressure from us. Um, second half, just before our time, like you say, with King V getting Simbind, which we'll come on to in a minute. Second half got a bit, bit scrappy, you know, a bit niggly, uh, and we just couldn't find any momentum or, or sort of way to break all Kings of Rovers down after that. Well, I thought the first half, particularly the first sort of 20 minutes of the, of the game, first 15, 20 minutes, we, we dominated it for me. I thought, OK, I looked mm. nervous, it looked a bit jittery. They were the home side, the pressure was on them, really, they were obviously the table. And, um, yeah, we came out all guns blazing. I mean, they should have scored early doors. They overplayed that one uh, where they burst through. I think it was Schneider who dropped the ball. But um, after that, we, I think we, we had at least three or four uh, dropouts that we forced. And we just couldn't score. We just couldn't break them down. And I think, you know, a lot of credit needs to go to them. I thought they defended really, really well. They were very, very organised in defence. And then, obviously, they got that sucker punch try. Then they broke away uh, and scored. And that was a, a real hammer blow, that, because it had been all Salford. And then... You know, um, we we started to implode a bit. I thought at the start of the second half, we started giving penalties away, repeat set six agains and and what have you. And King Bunny, are you having a very clumsy challenge? You know, we lose him for ten minutes. And um, but there was still nothing in the game. You know, until they kicked that penalty goal to make it eight nil. I think even then we were still in the match. Um, there was nothing in it, but. Uh, no, we just we we never really looked like scoring. The only opportunity he had was when Danny Addy showed some nice footwork and he sent Partington over and the, the referee called it back for a forward pass. But other than that, we didn't really create anything. And you know, I was watching it and I thought Brody Croft worked his socks off. Sneedy was working hard. Brian Bradley was working hard. You know, but, but the forwards just they just looked shattered to me. They just looked mm-hmm. absolutely shattered. The, the players didn't have anything left after the game, and it was one them. I come away from it thinking. Perhaps it's just just a bit of a bridge too far for us this season. We we're running out of troops, Rob, aren't we? I think that's the that's the thing. Yeah, looking at this, talking about the the Partington sort of try. Was the referee Marcus Griffiths? Uh, no, it's Liam Moore. Him, yeah, Liam Moore. Um, he obviously a lot of people on Twitter are talking about it being flat, and the video, the TV view of it, it did look flat, but. You've got to give the referee credit because he was in line with the play. And we have a lot of talk, don't we, about referees, you know, not being up to standard. But for me, he had the best view in the ground to make that decision. 
Yeah, and if the referee calls a forward pass, Rob, it's difficult because you don't make any odds because if you go to a big screen, you can't decide a forward pass anyway. So you've just got to go what the referee says and he sees it with quick time. And for me, the 50-50 out there, you get some um, throughout the season and, and then you don't get some. There's some tries we've scored this season probably off forward passes. So, so I, I don't think that was... Um, a turning point in the game really I, I, I come away from the match and I said to you on Saturday night I thought they were the Miles better team I mm. thought they deserved the game I thought they deserved the win we ran out of steam we didn't we had nothing left in that second half we couldn't get out of our own half could we so um, we were never going to win the game I, th- I think if you'd have played all night I don't think we'd have scored it was just one of those, those nights really and you know then you heard all the rumours about the players having an illness they had Covid and this that and the other and it's difficult, and it's difficult. but I don't think Paul Rowley would use that as an excuse, and I don't think we should use that as an excuse. I think you just got to hold your hands up sometimes and say, you know, they're a tough side to beat up there. They're a tough side to beat on their own ground, and and they they were better on the night. Yeah, King V, uh, sin binned for a late tackle, uh, Paul. I thought it, it was. I don't think it was that late. I, I just thought, like you say, sometimes the ball just moves so quick. Um, I thought it was a bit harsh, but Chris Charles next to me, he, he was the saying, yeah, definite yellow card. One of them things, I suppose, I suppose with King V, that's the nature of the beast. If sometimes he's, he's late or, or high, he gets put in the bin. He's clumsy. <laughs> he's a bit clumsy. I thought he tackled the wrong man. He tackled the dummy runner. That's what yeah. I thought. I thought he, he, he just lined up the wrong guy there. So, it was late, but if that guy had had the ball, he wouldn't have been simping because it would have been a good tackle. But because he's flattened the wrong person and tackled somebody off the ball, that's I think that's what he's what he's given. I don't think it's a two-game ban. But then having said that, he didn't get a ban for that tackle on um, Bevan French at Wigan where he... Um, did he get sent off for that? No, he got simping for that, didn't he? And he probably should have got a red card for that because that was a bit high, wasn't it? So I think he mm. just needs to work on his... His technique a bit. I think sometimes forwards, when they're big like King, they can they can get wrong wrong footed a bit, and, and it makes you look a bit daft when you when you swing. But yet again, this week we're talking about the disciplinary people, and just like I was talking to them, them wire supporters today, that Paul Paul Vaughan, he's got four matches. It's absolutely ridiculous. He's helping a bloke up off the floor, and he's got four games. Do these people not have any common sense? Do they just do it to wind supporters up? It's it's just. I mean, the King Vaughan, yeah, one, yeah, I can accept. But some of the, the bands, they're, they're absolutely crazy. I mean, we were talking the other week about Callum Watkins, the ban he got. What, what for? It's just, ugh. he's turning people off the sport, Rob, it, it really is. But the King Runny Eye one, hold our hands up, we'll, we'll accept that one. But some of the others are ridiculous. Yeah, Parky, one of your favourite subjects, uh, referees and some dodgy decisions, especially the, the Warrior one, which one uh, Paul's talking about. Yeah, I, I've, I've, seen, I've seen that on the... Twitter and other social media. I, I I still can't work out what 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 the problem is. I don't I don't understand how he's got any type of bad. I don't obviously because of previous or whatever. You know they, they may take all that into account, but it was a bit of a strange one that that Vaughan thinks. It, they, there's absolutely nothing in it, um, and you know he, even if he's been a little bit sarcastic with a player who's on the floor trying to say you know get up, don't be soft. So what? What? what where's where's the harm? He's not. But I remember years ago was it. Uh, Josh Griffin got done for got sim business and a ban for ruffling someone's hair. Yeah. I mean, come on, this is rugby league. It's, it's ridiculous. But I've not seen the King V one. Uh, I've asked people what what was the incident, and nobody seemed to know what had happened. So, uh, like I say, I've not watched it back. I don't know. Um, but to get a two match ban for something that seems innocuous to, to most people, even what happened the other week at Wigan, he didn't get a ban. He didn't mm. he got off. So what? Where's there's no follow up? I don't understand what what the problem is with it. Um, yeah, th- th- there's no um, consistency with these these bands and this. And all of a sudden, anything where someone's slightly over the shoulder is now you're getting banned. But you can't bring that in at the end of a season. Bring it in at the start and say anything above the shoulder, you're going. You know that. You don't wait till the end of the season when every player's tired and you know the drain and big games are coming. It, it just seems crazy, but. Um, yeah, I think uh, I, I just want to go back to what, what Paul was saying there about the, the performance and and so on. We we I know we mentioned off air when we were chatting about we we've got players in our squad who haven't played enough this year who haven't put minutes on the pitch certainly forwards, and that is now having a, an effect on the forwards that are, are out there. You know, obviously we lost Shane Wright halfway through the season, a massive blow for the, for the team because he was he was brilliant, but. Those other players have had to go out every single week virtually. 
it's, you know, the pack has hardly changed through the year with, with the same sort of bunch of players being available. And it gets to this time of the year and it's no wonder they're tired. Mm. We need, we need, if you're going to have bodies in your squad, they've got to be, got to be ready to play. I understand certain players will get injured, some will have long-term stuff, but we seem to, to have possibly three or four players there that haven't contributed enough this year and our forwards are now suffering. And that's why you get King V making these sloppy mistakes. I mean, the guy's probably drained. It's been a tough season for all of them. All the teams have more players to interchange and bring in and swap over. We haven't got that. Um, and, you know, looking forward, we can only hope that's something we can address in the, in the off-season. Uh, I don't know whether we can. I don't know what the financial situation looks like. But that's that for me is possibly where we might fall down at the end of the season. The fact that we just haven't had enough bodies to replace some that may maybe playing it shouldn't. I know Cal Watkins has played games where I've looked at him and thought he shouldn't be out there at the moment. He's limping. He's not looking right. You know, other other players in the team. So um, yeah, it's it, that that's a big issue for me. Um, and I do feel for the lads now that. Are, are, putting the body on the line still that they're probably just drained yeah two points paul one um referees obviously have a chart i don't they must have rules that they have to follow and it's the way they read it and obviously you know these weird decisions that they're getting they're probably going what this what they say on the on the rules rather than using the common sense because mm. referees are judged by someone in the stand and i think they go off what the rules say rather than what common sense says and also what parky was saying there just to to go back on that um we've had i say a lot of injuries people left as well so paul rowley's pool of players was always shrinking with it so it, it was baffling that you know the three or four players who, who didn't really get much game time didn't get more yeah but there's there's certain players in the squad who, who are there and seem fit that never play you see him walking out in the, in the Muslim flute every week, don't you, after the match? And, mm. you know, Greenwood's one, Dixon's one, Sidlow's one. Paul only signed these players. Well, he didn't sign Greenwood, but he signed the other two. So, uh, and, and a couple of times they've been on the bench and not played. So, I don't get that one sometimes when you're tired and you, you're not playing all, all your players. So, and he did that a few weeks ago with Jack Armoride as well. So, I'm not so sure what's going on there, but I don't know. You, you know, you've got to trust what Paulo's judgment, haven't you? But just going back to the the referees thing, I don't think half the time it's the referees' fault. Um, like the, the the Paul Vaughan thing, it's, mm. it's, the, it's these idiots at the the review panel. I mean, what, what are they playing at? They just to me, they, they're just getting everybody's back. Should be going to social media and Twitter and all that. They're just annoying everybody, annoying all the supporters, and I think they're turning people off the sport. I mean, do we want people to watch rugby league? Because it just makes people so negative, doesn't it? I mean, just use a bit of common sense. It's like the load of school teachers. I know we'll ban him for that. He's, he's done this. Yeah, I think there is something in the letter of the law that says you're not supposed to touch somebody. Yeah, he wants the, the ball's dead. Yeah. For me, that is if someone's down on the ground, they've got a serious <laughs> neck injury or something, don't yeah. touch them until the doctor's got on. And I think that's the rule that they're using there. I mean, if he's just helping somebody up, that Vaughan one, he was having a laugh with the player. Yeah. He was lifting up. So it's in the spirit of the game. It's, it's a bit of good-natured sort of banter, isn't it? And then to ban someone. What sort of message does that send out to people? It's like, it just makes the game daft. But but no, just going back, we're going back to Solver, weren't we, and, and, the, and the players. Yeah, and we've, and we've been <coughs> two on that one. I think we have run out of numbers. And, you know, I think uh, the Shane Wright one, as Parky said, I think that was a big turning point in the season because he, he could would have been up there for the dream team, I think, because he was playing that well. Um, we, Gerard as well. He was, you think like this time last season, how well he was playing, and we've missed him for, for a lot of the back end of this season. So Shane Wright, Gerard out, Dupree as well. He, he was a big hole and he left. I mean, you've you plugged his hole with um, Brad Singleton, haven't you? And I think Brad's done really well. But yet again, he was missing at the weekend because he's got suspended. So he's, he's, he's snakes and ladders, isn't it? You're, like, you're going up and down, aren't you? Trying to, trying to put fires out. So, um, so yeah, it's difficult. It is difficult. So, I spoke to Paul Rowley, Sam Stone and Ryan Briley after the game. And this is what they had to say. So, that was Paul Rowley, Ryan Briley and Sam Stone after the game. Uh, Paul, obviously, Paul wasn't happy that the execution wasn't great. But he said that his players uh, worked hard and he, worked proud, he was proud of their efforts. 
Yeah, I think the effort was there uh, for all to see. I mean, there's a photograph Steve McCormick took of um, Brody Croft that I used in the preview this week, and he looked absolutely shattered after the game. I don't think you could ever question the players' um, efforts on that, which you should be. It's the job, isn't it, at the end of the day. You've got to put 100% in. But I think the application was off. I think there, there was a few times where timing was out, you know, where some of the moves we tried to put on. Old Kingston Rovers snuffed us out. And I think with Brody Croft, for, for me this season, he's become a real mark man. I think teams have really sort of numbered up on him. The teams tend to run at him. They target him. They're running at him all the time, you know, making him do do plenty of tackling. And that takes it out of the lad. It really does. Mm. So, so yeah, I think teams, they're not stupid either. They'll, they'll do the homework. It's like Lee. You look at Lee Leopards. I think next season, they won't be that unknown quantity. You'll probably find that, that their players will get targeted, you know, like Sir Lachlan Lamb and that. They'll, they'll, they'll be marked up and, and coaches will have plans for them. So, it's, it's how you work around that and and, and, and sort of play, play your game. And when we've talked about rolling ball, haven't we? And, and we tried that at times, but all okay, are good at that. They're good at the offload game as well. I think they was really good at shifting the ball. We couldn't stop them at times on, on Saturday night. But no, I don't think you can question the effort. I think we've just, we've all mentioned it, haven't we, tonight? The, the, we're low on numbers and we know that. The, the squad is really tested and it's even smaller because he doesn't pick all the players. So he's only going off a re- really small pool of players anyway. So the squad... He's picking itself more or less every week. Yeah. Sam Stone, Parkin talks about you know the disappointing result, but they were going to get up for, for this week against Catalan Dragons. Uh, Ryan Briley wasn't particularly happy about the performance. Talked about the sort of the dumb rugby that we played um and you know frustrations that, that come out of that. I think we've seen it many times this season. We last season when it clicked, certainly that back end of the season, it was magic to watch. Everybody wanted to see sort of the way we played, you know, the way we, we moved the ball about, we tore teams apart, inside, outside. It didn't, didn't matter how we went, we, we were, you know, there was always a man backing up or whatever. And this year, I think for the most part, we, we've been off with our, our timing hasn't been right. You know, some of the offloads have been, I've, I've just been stupid, really. It looks like at times we've got carried away with our own sort of, you know, we're starting to believe our own myth, if you like, that we, we are this Harlem Globetrotters type of team, rather than sometimes just controlling the ball, getting through a set, building pressure. It's like we've got to score, we've got to score, and it's frantic. And I know that's the way we play, and when it works, yeah, it's brilliant. But how many times has it actually worked this year? That's that's the key. The, the games we've won, you know, most of them we've been in a bit of a, a bit of a scramble with. You know, I know we haven't lost many by our big scores. I know Catalan and, and Wakefield were we're two big ones, but other than that, we you know we we basically compete. But if we cut out errors, I remember the the OKR game at home early in the season. And I think we made was it sixteen or eighteen handling errors. You, you're not going to win games doing that, and and they beat us. If we'd have kept hold of two or three of them passes, we'd have won that game. And that's how it's been through the year. And I think we've just got to to go back to basics, but and cut you know stop these offloads when they're not needed. Just do your work, especially the forwards. Just get the ball down the pitch and let's put pressure on them down there because throwing the ball about in our own half, we, we've made too many errors this year and that's that's not good enough. And the, and the other side is we forced ourselves to defend a lot more than we should, mm. which has then cost us because discipline's not been good enough because we've been starting getting tired in games, giving away extra sets, you know, on the back of that. And, I, I, you know, I say it every week, we've not always got the, you know, the rub of the green off the officials, but that's that's the way it is. We need, if we control the ball, you control the pace of the game, you make them do the work, that's the way it should be. We, we've got it a little bit wrong at times this year, and I'm sure, I'm sure it's something that Paul will look to, to patch up in, in, you know, in the off-season if we don't make the playoffs. Um, but again, for me, the, the, the major issue is bodies. We've just got tired bodies a lot of the time and they're playing a little bit, you know, probably a little bit lower on energy and making silly decisions. And that's, you know, that's been part of the problem. Yeah, I think, uh, Paul, what Park is saying there is is right. I think you, you go early because you haven't got the forward to roll down the middle, have they? So that, that they know that the only way they're going to sort of trouble teams is, is attack areas that they don't expect you to go early. And sometimes if you don't get there, then they, we resort to kicking early, don't we? Or, or, you know, tactics that don't quite work sometimes. But, I've got, like you said, we talk about bodies and that isn't Paul Rowley's fault. Um, he can only work with what he's got. Uh, off-season is going to be massive. You know, we all know why, if we don't 
win on Sunday and the results don't go our way, we didn't make the six. It was purely down to having, not having enough bodies in the squad when it mattered. And the only way that is fixed is we buy more players. But more players, you need more money. And then more money means more from us fans slash sponsors. So it's a vicious circle that sort of will we will need to to address there really. Yeah, um, there's a few things on it. I mean, we've probably got just about enough players if you play them all, but we don't play them all because as mm. I've just mentioned it, there's three or four lads who never play. So if you can replace them with players that you're going to use, mm. that's going to make the squad more useful. Because I've seen people say the last few weeks, oh, it's all for this, it's all for that. We've not got no money, we've not got a pot to we in or whatever. And I don't like people keep saying that because... You know, when you talk about this IMG and all that, if we keep saying that, people are going to believe it and they're going to think, mm. well, what's the point in having them in a Super League? And I don't always buy that because you've got Brodie Croft, who's a man of steel. You've got Callum Watkins, you've got Mark Sneed, you've got Tim Laffey, Joe Burgess. They're not 18-year-old kids who are wet behind the ears. We've got a decent squad there. We're probably just a few players, for me, we're three forwards short of having a really cracking team, I mm. think. And, you know, with Shane Wright in there fully fit all season and, and Gerard, I think it would have been a totally different story. So so I do get where people are coming from, but I think it's just, it's being smart with the recruitment for me. I mean, we've got we've just got to cut our cloth accordingly. We know that. We know we can't go out and sign big NRL stars. You know, people like that Paul Vaughan at Warrington, we can't afford them sort of players. But I think there's players out there that could do a job for us. And the one we've signed there, Brad Singleton, that's the, that's the sort of bloke we need. People mm-hmm. like, if we could sign two more of them to add to next season, bring Shane right back as well. We've got a good side there. So, um, so yeah, I don't think it's... I think Paul Rowley and Kurt Haggerty and, and Bleasy will know players who are available and players who can come in and do the job for us. We can't afford to sign blokes that are going to doss about, like that Maguire that Warrington. We can't afford people like that. We need blokes to come in that you're going to get the best out of you're going to get miles out of and they're going to, you know, run for you every week. And, that, and that's what we want. You know, people that we, it's, it's hard. Like I'm trying to think of a metaphor. We know point in us like, but if it was a car, we know point in us buying a Audi R8 or whatever, or something like that, because we won't get the usage out of it. We need the Volkswagen Golf, something that's going to run forever for us and, and, and get the best out of it in the season. So yeah, we need a few golfs and uh, we'll be all right. But yeah, a couple more Brad Singletons. That, that's what we need. We just need some more beef in that pack. Yeah, it's rugby league smarts, isn't it, Park? It's not. It's not. We talk about rugby league smarts, but it's not always just on the pitch. It's off the pitch as well. Yeah. You know, like yeah. Paul said, the likes of Paul King, Ian Blees. You know, they are picking these players who, who are sort of, you know, doing good job for us on on a reasonable amount of money, I suppose, compared to other Super League, you know, uh, talent which they probably would have been offered for more. And um, so we're just hoping that they can continue to roll that dice and keep getting sixes. Yeah, I don't think that's... It's not the recruitment, really, when you look at it, it hasn't been bad. You know, no. there's always going to be one or two that you're going to pick up when it's not going to work. But you look at, you know, for me, Ben Halliwell, Halliwell who's been, you know, he must be come on a, uh, you know, on a very tight budget, let's say that. And he's been he's been really good for us. We signed Dion Cross last year, uh, you know, basically playing on the wing for Widnes um, in the Championship. He come in, he's been a solid Super League centre for the last two years. We, we're good at that, even Ryan Briley. To, to that effect, you know, but some haven't worked for me. The, the big, the big thing is, I watched Wakefield get well. We saw Wakefield get relegated this week, um, and I just want that. That's a warning to Salford as a fan and as a club for me that if you don't invest, that's what happens. Wakefield, we're hoping they'd have enough to stay in. You looked at that squad at the start of the year and went, "That's not really good enough." Same with Castleford. There's so many gaps in that team that weren't good enough. We need to we need to plug our gaps now. We can't just go, well, we've done all right the last couple of years. We can rely on Paul Rowley being a, you know, a master coach or whatever. We need to invest or we need people to invest. That's the only... We, we can't just rely on you know what we've got and hoping that one or two signings coming in. You know, Ethan Ryan is supposed to be one. Does anyone know anymore? Has he heard anymore? You know, usually you get a rumour of one or two or something like that. We need, we do need to. Otherwise, we don't want to end up where we are. I know AMG might have a say in what happens in the future anyway, but we've we've got to keep competing. We've got to keep being up there, and and our recruitment is good on on the budget we have. But 
we need more. We can't go with 23, 24 players next year. Um, uh, you know, ho- hopefully if Fed come up, they might have a struggle getting players together. But other than that, everyone else is going to reinforce next year again and it's going to just get tougher for us. Yeah. Let's go on to stats now. Uh, Paul, top tackler, Callum Watkins, 37. Jack Armadroid, 21. Andy Ackers, 42. King V, 27. Sam Stone, 28. Oliver Partington, 38. Yeah, did a, did a good shift, Rob. I don't think we can uh, we can question that. We had to do a lot of tackling that game, particularly in the second half. I thought first half we probably had the better in the first half, but the second half we we didn't really. Okay, came at us didn't he, in that second half, and I thought that try he scored down that left edge, Kenny Dow's pass to to Ryan Hall was a belter, really good try that. But no, I thought I thought the lads, you know, they dug in. The defense was good. I think both sides defended really well. That's why it was only a twelve nil. It was it was tight, wasn't it? It was nip and tuck. And someone said to me in the week um, on the Sunday, actually, it, it was like a playoff game, and it was. Yeah. It probably wasn't the, the quality. Probably wasn't. There was a, a lot of drop ball and that, but the intensity was. But the intensity levels were good, and um, and and that's what you need. And if we were if we are to beat Catalan and, and get into the playoffs, you'd need that again because you know you're probably going to get rewarded with either Catalans away. Saints away or Wigan away aren't you, in the playoffs so it's uh, looking like Catalans at the moment isn't it so uh, that'll be another intense game but no the, 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 the lads defended well I thought and they had done the last couple of weeks you know defence has been tight and, and been solid yeah top metre makers Ken Seal 123 Joel Burgess 104 King V89 Andy Acker 71 and Danny Addy 76 Paul me or Parker you yeah 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 well like you said Rob You've got to get people over 100, haven't you? Um, mm. You know, there's there's probably a lot of players there who, who've not quite got over the, the 100. So, uh, no, I think that just shows the, the dominance of OKR, doesn't it, really? We, we weren't really, particularly in that second half. We, the first half, with the possession we did have, it was all close to their line. Like I said, with those dropouts, there was a, the kick through from Mark Sneed at the post. And I mm. thought it was, he aimed for that as well for me. And obviously it didn't come off and we was unlucky with that. But we had a lot of ball in their territory. So it wasn't, like we were making loads of yards, but we were there camped on the line. And I think sometimes we just need a bit more inventiveness, you know, on the, the last tackle plays, the kicks. You know, sometimes we do, we just have to dolly it in the air for the, for the big wingers, don't we? And it doesn't come off, you know, try a kick behind the line, put it on the floor, you know, test them out, greasy pitch, things like that. But um, I, we, we mentioned before, didn't we? I uh, think Parky said about Ethan, Ethan Ryan, is it the, the OKR guy, um, the winger? We, me and you were talking to Chris Giles, weren't we, about that? And, um, uh, Charles, he reckons we've signed him, so uh, nothing's been confirmed yet. Has it? But he was—he was saying he's a really good player, and he's—you know—he's got plenty of pace on that. So, um, so let's hope that one comes true. Yep. Average gains: Ken Co eight, Joe Burgess nine, Jack Armandroyd eight, Andy Ackers nine, King V seven. You know, I suppose in a tough game like that, you want to be round about sort of ten, don't you, Parky? So, you know, what is it? Five, six players there touching on eight, nine. I think you mentioned Andy Ackers in, in tackling and, and, you know, average gain and everything else in that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it shows how important Andy is to us. Uh, I know he's he's runs from dummy half. Uh, you know, they can be devastating at times. Um, he picks up cheap metres. Uh, he catches players out. He's very, very clever. And, and then you mentioned King V a few times. And, you know, obviously I, don't, I didn't see it. But if he's gone off for 10 minutes and he's got them stats, you know, we've obviously missed him when he has gone off. And it's up to it's up to the other players that stand up and take that that role. Um, and then you think, well, if he has done that many meters and he has done that many tackles, maybe he's just a bit tired when he's going in for these tackles, and that's where we need to to be able to swap him off, bring on a, you know a, a fresh pair of legs of but of the same size to have the same impact. And that's where again, it, you know, it's going to go down to recruitment again. I think. Yeah. Big thanks for your three word. Man of the match uh, reports. Uh, we always like to read them out, seeing what the, uh, the the that's going on in the in the world of the Sulphur Devils supporters. David Deakin, one more chance. Ryan Briley, Colin Wilson, get well soon. Briley, Paul's mate, Roy Ellibri, toothless attack options. Ryan Briley, Chris and Janet Shenton, too many errors. Croft, uh, CS predictable and attack. Briley, Ryan Fisher, poor and attack. Briley and uh, Andy Walsh, no way through. Paul, so yeah, a bit sort of, I wouldn't say despondent, a bit flat by the sound of it. Yeah, I think it's to be expected, wasn't it? It was, um, it was a big night. I enjoyed, uh, you know, it's not 
um, we don't often play Saturday nights, do we? Uh, rugby league, but I enjoyed the experience going up there on a Saturday night. It was it was nice going up with a family in the afternoon and late afternoon, and, and it was a buzz. It was a real buzz, as I said before. The, the atmosphere was really good. And when you don't score, when you get nilled, and you know, we got nilled in Catalan, it's I don't know. You come away from the game feeling a bit cheated, really, because you've not had anything to cheer at all, have you? So, so yeah, I, I can I can understand where the supporters are coming from uh, on that one. Big effort and. You know, a win there. We'd have probably been in the playoffs, wouldn't we? So, um, so yeah, it was a disappointing result to, to get beat. So, um, but you know, we've got another chance this week, and I mean, Warrington aren't, aren't the uh, the most convincing team at the moment, aren't they? So we've just got to go out there and do a job this weekend. But no, I, I think regarding the man of the match, I think I didn't do one, but mine was, would have been Ryan Briley. I thought he was was our best player by a mile. I think he's for me, he's player of the year. I think his commitment, you know, attack and defence. You know, he's been great this season. I, I, I think he's up there. He's in my top three anyway. I think Sam Stone's another one. I think Sam's been great. Callum Watkins. I picked five up to now, but I can't sort of pick which one. But Ryan's definitely in there. Yeah. So, uh, that's the look back at the Hawkins Rovers game. And now, uh, we'll see what's happening in the world of Salford Devils. So, we'll start... Uh, Paul, uh, with uh, the club uh, putting out a statement regarding fan behaviour. Um, obviously, you know, it's a family sport. You know, there's look sounds like there's sort of uh, disturbances occurring uh, on, on the terrace on a regular basis. And it's a it's a it's a bad thing, really, in, in, in modern day that, that this kind of thing is happening. Alcohol, mate. That's simple, mm. simple as alcohol. Um, I'd, if it was me, I'd ban it. Uh, it'd be like football. I'd just say, have a drink in a concourse. You can't take your drink to your seat because you can't have football. But rugby league, they seem to. I think that's all it is. I mean, I can hand on heart say I've never had an alcoholic drink at a Salford match in the 30 odd years I've watched them. Not while the 80 minutes, not while the game's on. I might have one after the game, but I've seen it in the in the, in the the stands. There's a lot of people who go, and to me, they don't watch the game. They just doss about for the 80 minutes and go in the fans and all that. Do you know when a match is on? You two will probably be the same. I don't take my eyes off it. I don't. I won't go to the toilet. I won't go for a drink. When the 80 minutes is on, I'm, I'm in the zone. I'm watching the match. And I just wish other people were like that because it's not football. You know, football, they do all that where they're singing and you know, antagonising the other supporters and all that. Rugby league, when I first started going with my dad, he never got segregated. You were always together with the, with the away fans. My dad was the, one of the worst. Him and his mate, Billy, they used to argue for... I don't know with it, with it, with the supporters. At the end of the game, they shake hands, we walk out, we'd all say, you know, see you later, and it was great. It really worked for the eighty minutes. You'd be rowing and going on, and then the, I used to think it was brilliant that you know the the camaraderie you have with with away supporters. But it, it's a bit more tribal now, isn't it? Like football, and I don't know whether it's younger people coming. I sound a bit of an oldie now, don't I? But we seem to have got a bit of a, I don't know, <clears throat> a few supporters who are a bit bit daft and that. I don't know. I just need to grow up a bit, really. But I think it's it's definitely beer, isn't it? Mm. Parky, you're our, our man on, on the terrace. Um, what's your thoughts on it? Um, I've got I'm, I've got two ways of looking at this. To be honest, I've seen I've seen some incidents in the last couple of years, and I, I would say they get blown out of all proportion mm-hmm. uh, for what they are. You know, you'd see worse in a pub on a Friday night. Than, you know, the, the, but it is creeping in more and more. There is an element of people who are. Uh, I'm more obsessed with the opposite fans than they are with the game, which is, you know, it's a bit annoying. And they do go because they can get a bit of a rise out of somebody or, or whatever it is. Um, and yeah, alcohol and whatever else plays plays a huge part. And I wonder if maybe, you know, you go back to the to the 80s and I, I remember that the, 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 there has always, I mean, people say, oh, you don't get in trouble at rugby league. You never, you have, you have. I, I remember it all my life. There's always been, some element where someone will kick off. You're not going to get thousands of men in a stadium, generally, going back, you know, before we have more females now, but, um, and they're not going to be any tension. You know, they're not going to be a little bit of something. I, you know, I've been, I've been to many grounds where it's been well known that it's going to happen. Um, but now I think perhaps people not being getting, uh, being able to get access to football as much. You know, in the 80s and 90s, football was the, you know, the place people went and drank and unfortunately that sort of stuff happened. Mm. Now, it's not as easy to get a ticket. It's not as cheap but as rugby league still, you know, probably best value for money in that way. So there is there is a bit of that. Um, but yeah, it, need, it needs to stop. 
we're gonna we're getting an awful reputation. And it's okay for these people who are turning up once or twice, you know, and, and it, it goes and then they'll never be seen again. Or they might not. The next time we go to a place like Craven Park or or wherever, these people who have been attacked or have been abused will remember that. And it might not be you that's getting it. It might be the innocent bloke who's took his family to the game who then that their fans might want revenge. You've got it. People have just got to start thinking on. It's it's a game of rugby now, and I get as annoyed as anyone does at the game. I'll I'll lose me rag. But not not looking for a fight. That's not. I'm not interested. I'm getting annoyed at the match. I'm getting annoyed at the referee. I'm getting. You know what I mean? Tension builds. But like Paul said, there the amount of times at the end of games that you end up talking to you know a rival fan in a in a pub or whatever. You wouldn't think of having a fight with them. You wouldn't think of kicking. You're just gonna have a chat over a beer about the match and about rugby in general. But that's what rugby league has got. Um, so yeah, there's, there's several ways of looking at it. But we've certainly got an element in the last year or so where certain people need to calm down, and they, they, they're doing the club a lot of damage. Mm. Every club has a has their own empty heads, don't they? And it's not like. You know, I suppose there is a spotlight on us because we are Salford for a start. Uh, and obviously, you know, little instance coming in here and there. Um, but like I say, it's it's sport and it let's just enjoy for what it is. Let, let's not try and feed the fire uh, and, you know, reputation starts exceeding us and it, think people start getting banned and we're getting like, I don't know, like football where you get, you know, policemen following you around and stuff like that. We don't have any of that. Just go to the game, enjoy the game. Don't do a thing silly. Um, and let Paul Riley do his magic, Paul. Yeah, I think it, it's, it's the same in life, isn't it? Now, I mean, you can't police life, can you? People will just do what they want, won't they? You, we can say what we want on here, but people will just do what they like. Yeah. Uh, and that's just the way it is. So, I, I don't know, does it does it need somebody to be in the stand, you know, watching them, watching the supporters? Um, we, have the, we have Matt who does safeguarding and all that. Does it need a couple more of them sort of people? I don't know. It's not really my bag. I'm not really asked to be honest with you. Judge wish people would just behave themselves. It's um, I just go for a match, me, and, and that's it. Like Pag said, you get on with people, don't. And I'd never dream of having a punch up with somebody unless I'm in a ring with them or whatever, and I'm told to do it. But not not in in life. I mean, I'm not I'm not like that. I, I just like talking to everybody and being friends with people. But some people are like that. They they go for the aggro, don't they, and all that. So. That's up to them. But, you know, we have noticed it. And I mean, like Parky says, I think sometimes it does get blown out of proportion because everyone's got a phone nowadays, haven't they, filming stuff. There's a bit of my at Castleford, one the early season. And I think that was handbags at 10 paces, wasn't it? So, um, and I know somebody was going on about a flare in the in the crowd um, at the weekend. And, and you know what? I mean, I might get in trouble for saying this. I think that adds for the atmosphere, them flares. I think it makes it really good. I watched some, I think it was a German football game the other day. You couldn't even see the pitch. There was that many flares. And it looked amazing, but... I know you're not supposed to have them, but you know, just adds, adds a bit to it, doesn't it? But I like it, like Pags. I don't think it's like a major thing. I think probably just a few people that just had a few too many sherbets. Yeah, I think it's more of an health and safety thing, really. But, you know, here's the rule. The rules are rules are rules, aren't they? So you've got to work with rules the Rules are there to be broken, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, other news... Um, King V banned for two games. We talked about that in the review of the whole KR game. Um, probably might end his season, Parker. Yeah, I, again, I don't get the two match ban. I don't understand where that that comes from. I don't understand why you know if it's not as bad as everybody you know people are saying it wasn't that bad or didn't even notice it. Um, I'm not sure why it's a two match thing. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm surprised we haven't appealed the two match. I know you, you know, you're gonna get if you're gonna get a ban, you get a ban, but um that's I mean it's a big blow for us because I think he's been certainly the second half of the season, I think he's been tremendous. He's come on leaps and bounds, he's he, you know, he, he, he finds his front when he makes it, you know, he makes big means so he gets up, tries to play the ball as quick as possible. He's probably been our most impactful forward this this season, certainly as a prop, you know. Um he definitely stuck sort of stood up when uh, when Dupree went and and took over that mantle. So um, it's a big blow for us. It really is. If we do make the playoffs, I mean, I was thinking about this before. If we beat Catalan on on Friday and Warrington get beat, we'll probably do ourselves a disservice by having to go to Catalan. Um, 
And that's where you need all your big forwards in a place like that. So, yeah, it's, it's a tough one for him, but we've just got to, you know, persevere and hope somebody steps up. Yeah. Other bits of news, the awards evening, which was supposed to happen on a Monday, got cancelled due to illness. Um, Club say, um, obviously now they're going to be doing a pitch uh, on Friday night after the game. Paul, um, obviously, you know, opportunity for fans to, to, to stay behind after the game and uh, watch the players get their awards. Does that mean we'll have to wait even longer to speak I know. to the players? I was thinking that. that afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's always late when we get out anyway, isn't it? No, I know. Gonna, yeah, I've got to enjoy that. My mum and dad are going away on uh, on Friday, so they won't be able to go. They're going to miss the last game. So uh, I think my sister might be coming, but me and our image will be going. So, uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll hang fire. I'm working Saturday, but you know, I can do a late night. I do every other night. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have a watch of that because I wasn't going to the Player of the Year awards anyway. I'm a bit short of cash, but mm. but no, that that'll be good. I mean, it's a shame they can't they can't have it or they can't rearrange it because it you feel for the supporters and the players because they deserve that sort of night where they can get dressed up and put shirt and tie on because they worked really hard all season and I think it's nice to have lights like that to bring the, the supporters and the players together so I bet they'd look forward to that so it was a shame when that, that got cancelled but I suppose it was out of the, the club's hands really wasn't it yeah that's what I, my, my thoughts exactly Paul when I read it and they were like, oh, we're going to have a presentation on the picture for, oh, I'm going to be sat here for two hours now, waiting for players to come out. <laughs> yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so um, no presentation night. Uh, one ton of mashed potato available for anyone who wants one, go contact the club. Only joking, Parker. Only joking. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, you know what? Looking at that, it is a shame. Um I don't know whether it's something to do with the stadium or the planning or whatever, but I don't always get why we have the players' awards before the end of the season. Because uh, I want to see the players let their hair down at the end, you know, and celebrate what they've done through the year and have a, you know, have, have a chill out. Those who want to have a drink, have a drink. You can't, because the trouble is, if, if they'd have had it on Monday night and a player had picked up a bottle of beer, somebody would have said, oh, if he has a bad game on Friday, that's why, because he's had, you know, you get, I, I remember in 2019, I think we had it. The week leading up to the grand final, didn't we have something? Mm. Or was it the, up to the semi final? I know it you know, didn't make a massive difference, but I always thought, surely you should have it after the season to give the lads a chance. I know the contracts end, but they don't end until after October, after the grand final. So you could leave it a week after the season and have it then. Um, so I do feel for the players because they're not going to get to, you know, mingle and the, and the fans aren't going to get to see, with, you know, see them relax and just, you know, have, have a general chat with them. But, uh, yeah, we, we can only do what we can do. And if illness has struck and they're trying to keep the players as safe as possible and and the punters, of course, you know, if, if a player has got something, you don't want to be catching it or whatever. So, um, yeah, a bit of a shame, but I'm sure we'll, uh, I'm sure plenty will stay behind to, uh, to thank the lads anyway. Yeah, blue light day on Friday against Catalan. We've had a few special uh, game days throughout the season. Uh, Paul, uh, Success for some, not so, and for my opinion, not success for the other ones. But we've had a we've had a good mix. Yeah, we have. I think I was I was looking at the the attendances and I think the attendances have really improved this season, haven't they? You know, for, for quite a lot of the home games and they've been good atmospheres. You know, if you go back to that that Warrington game, I keep referring to me Warrington friends, but the, one of the guys I was talking to today was saying what a great atmosphere it was. The game probably wasn't the highest quality. It was dead exciting. He said I really enjoyed going to. To um, the Salford Stadium, and um, yeah, it, I think it's been good this season the way we've got the community involved, and you know it's probably got new people to the ground. I've seen a lot of people there this season I've not seen before. You know, you see plenty of kids and, and families and that as well. So I've just renewed my season ticket today, actually, in our Imagines and my mum and dad. So, uh, so yeah, that's us for next season as well. So, so yeah, let's hope we can get behind it, and and hopefully we can have more of these days next year. You know, I know Lee, Lee Leopards have. They've done really well with all these music and things they've had. And I know it's probably cost a lot of money, stuff like that. But perhaps we could look at something like that next season. You'll know, get some local bands on and, you know, people, you know, give people opportunities, you know, um, to, to play, you know, maybe not like top line acts, but, you know, local acts and things like that. So uh, I know the club do a great job in the community anyway, but I think some of these days have been good. I think the Blue Light, they did last season, didn't they? And got the emergency services involved and that was quite an enjoyable day. Yeah, Armed Forces Day, Homelessness Day was was surprisingly good. Uh, Park obviously the club will be looking through the attendances, won't they? See what went well, see what didn't go 
so well in the different ones that they, they, they went through. Um, but yeah, it's been great. I think it's been a, a good thing. Hopefully more of the same next year. Yeah, yeah, I mean, let's be honest, we definitely needed something pre-game at, at the stadium. It's, mm. You know, the, the start of the season, we're playing games and you turned up, I mean, you know, we've said it a thousand times, we turn up for the match, right? mm. that's what we do. But um, you turn up, you go in the game, you come out, you go home. There's no, there doesn't seem to be a connection between the fan and the, and the club at that point. And then they started this and the, and the, the Armed Forces Day was magnificent, brilliant day, you know, the... The, the, the bands they had on, the singing, you know, and then everything going on around it, all the catering, um, all the catering bands, and obviously, you know, the, 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 sort of the army being there and all that. It was, it was a great day, really was. Um, shame the wind got up. We couldn't have the, the, the guys parachuting in with a ball, remember, right. I left. They had to cancel that. But, um, yeah, no, but it is great at the club and, and engaging with the community and, and, you know, open up and say, you know, like I say every week, this is, this is your club, it's our club, it's, you know, doesn't doesn't belong to one person. There's no single you know owner of it, and without the community, it's pointless. So uh, no, I, I I can't you know I, I can't congratulate the club enough on what they've done in 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 these sort of these odd days that they've fallen at the end of the season, and hopefully we can start the season with it next year. Um, obviously weather permitting, sometimes it's not going to be that easy, but there's uh, there's plenty of people out there who want representing who are part of our community. Yeah, final bit of news. Direct debit options for season tickets are now available uh, from the club. A lot of people asking about that because obviously finding a large chunk of money for a big for the season mm. ticket in one go, especially in these this day and age, uh, Paul is 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 going to be tough. So now people have that option to spread the cost out over twelve months, and hopefully that attracts even more people to get involved. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And and you know, season tickets selling them is difficult, isn't it, in the first place? And I think if you can get that money over the line of the doors, it does give you an opportunity then to, to spend that money. And, mm. you know, it's in the coffers, isn't it? So uh, it seems to me they've come out early this time. Of the season. I don't remember renewing mine before the end of the previous season. I think that's the first time I've ever done that. So, um, so yeah, let's hope we can we can sell a few and, and really go at next season. Like you said to me last Saturday, if we were to finish in the playoffs again, that's two seasons running where you've had a really good season finishing in the top six. And, you know, that's... Surely people have got to look at that now and, and, and invest in it. And um, I, I hope they do because we've been entertained. Some of the matches we've seen this season have been fantastic. Some of the home games. I know I know we've not we've not been as, as thrilling as last season. Like Parker said, there was a time last season where we looked unbeatable at times and we were turning up at matches thinking we're going to wipe the floor with these today just because of the rugby league we were playing. I think we were really blessed last season, weren't we? But same again, this season, I mean, if we win on Friday, we've got the same number of points that we got last season. Surprisingly, I didn't know that stat until I read it this week. So, uh, so yeah, I hope we ship plenty of tickets. I'm, I'm sure we'll do well with those. Yeah, obviously trying to attract new fans, Parker. And um, the way that I think it's weird, the way it's set up is that it might cost you next year 20, 25 quid plus to get in as a one mm. So really, if you're going to try and convince potential new fans, it might be worth saying, well, you might as well get a season ticket. And even if you auto after the games, it covers your cost. Yeah, the value's always been there in season tickets. Yeah, I don't, you know, I went a couple of years without buying one and just put, turned up every week and bought my ticket. So, I mean, the club benefited more from that, I think, but um, I certainly didn't. Uh, but yeah, it just makes sense, doesn't it? The, the trouble is, we, we need the money in because then mm. if we've got more money than the club we're expecting, at, you know, come November, uh, November, December, whatever, we could start looking at perhaps another player or whatever. But without signing players, people go, well, I'll wait, I'll wait and see who they're going to sign, I'll wait and see what they're going to do, I'm going to wait for some news. or what. It, it's, it's so difficult to get that balance. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've got to get out there and you know, try, try and get people buying them as early as possible so we know that the money's guaranteed. And, if, you know, I hate to say it this way, but if people get halfway through the season and give up, if you've already bought your season ticket, you know, mm. it's off sort of the, the club benefit, but... Um, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one, but we need to we need to get it out there. We need to advertise the fact that you know it's when you look at the price of a, a season ticket at a football ground these days compared to what you're going to play pay for watching us next season. It, you know, it's a it's a drop in the ocean, really is. And like you say, money's tight these days. So hopefully, people might see it as a you know as a way of sort of expanding you know their their leisure time, but for not an awful lot of money. Yeah, that's the that's the the hope. Uh, Parker will play. Uh, hopefully, play like you say, the, 
the the growth continues. I think we're up was it twenty percent last year. So hopefully we go again. Crowd continues to grow, continue to be successful on the field, and who knows what might happen in the in the next few years. Uh, final final bit of news is one of our favorite one of our fam- favorite former players has announced his retirement uh, this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Paul Josh Jones. Uh, has announced he's, he's retiring from professional rugby league. Uh, you know, what a great player he was for us. Uh, you know, when he's he stint uh, between 2016 and 2019, 114 appearances, 19 tries, um, you know, great in defence, great in attack. Um, I've, I always say, uh, if you can get eight out of 10 player in your team, you're going the right way. And for me, he was the king of the eight out of 10 player. Yeah, he was, uh, Josh Joe. I wish he'd have stayed, Rob, because his career didn't seem to kick on after he left so, but he struggled for, for injuries at Hull and, you know, the same at Huddersfield. I don't know how many games he's played for Huddersfield, but did really well for Salford and, you know, he was, um, the, the pinball was, it wasn't he really, bouncing mm-hmm. off players and that, and he, he was excellent in that 2019 season for him. He was excellent, you know, all the time he was there, but that 2019 season, I thought he was he was really good. I think an international call up as well around that time, yeah. didn't he? I think when he's playing for us, and yeah, I always thought it was a bit of a sideways move going to all. And yeah, he obviously did the what he thought was the right thing for him, and I'm sure he enjoyed himself. But it was a shame to to see that you know um, he's retired. I think he's he's had a few head knocks and things like that, hasn't he? And a few injuries as well, been scuppered by injuries. So you know, it's a real shame because he's probably still got years left in him. So. No, I hope he, he, he finds something else in his life or he goes into coaching or whatever venture he goes in next because we've interviewed him plenty of times, haven't we? He was always a really nice fella as well. Yeah, the thing about Josh, uh, Josh Jones, uh, Park, he was when we when me and Paul tried to interview him, he was like a ghost. I think we got him, I think he had, was it three <laughs> years at Salford? I think we interviewed him twice in three years because he just <laughs> used to slip past us without even, without us even noticing. Uh, but what was your uh, thoughts on him? Yeah, I don't know how he managed to slip down. He was a big lad. Uh, Honestly. It was weird. <laughs> uh, listen, I, I was a massive fan, and I said, I, I've said to everyone this week, he, he shouldn't have left us. He really shouldn't. Sometimes certain players are made for certain clubs, and he was a Salford player, without a doubt. And no, at the end of that season, 2019, when he'd already agreed to go and you know move on, um, he said, I think it might have been at the Players Awards that, that year, and he said that if it had known when he signed the contract to move off, what he knew at the end of the year, he wouldn't have left. He didn't want to go. Um, but he'd already, you know, because con- when contracts are being negotiated sort of early mid-season, Salford, we weren't having a great time in 2019 at that point. Mm-hmm. We hadn't gone on this run. We weren't making a grand final. And he was thinking, well, I need, I need to make sure, you know, the money's in the bank. We've got to get paid every week and make sure, I mean, you know, a good Super League team. I don't know where Salford are heading. By the end of the year, we're in the grand final, but he wasn't to know that. But he was a he was a fantastic player for us. Really, was a real. I mean, some of them runs he went on, he was just bouncing players off everywhere. Um, and I remember, I mean, he went through the full cycle with us as well because obviously 2017, the uh, the million pound game, he'd come from rugby union back from rugby union to us, mm. um, and was involved in that. And he, you know, obviously when he signed for Salford, that wasn't part of the plan. I remember that that game at, at Craven Park and. That last 15, 20 minutes, he was fantastic. He really was. I don't think he gets the credit. We always look at Josh Griffin, Nile Levels, you know, for, for the, the breaks and all that. But he's the one that got the ball out both times, kept the ball alive to get us on the attack in our own half. He bounced players off and he got the offloaded. Um, and I'll never forget that. And then obviously going forward, he was, he was great um, for the next couple of seasons. Um, so, yeah, he was a big blow when he left, I think. If he'd have stayed and if we could have kept tour or someone like, you know, Murdoch Nasilla around that time, you know, just before, yeah, you know, that was the makings of something special, I think, at Salford. But again, finances weren't there. You know, Jacko went and then that's the way it goes. But yeah, no, best luck to him. He, he, he never let us down and uh, it's just a shame the way it's ended for him. Paul, back me up about Josh, Josh Jones disappearing to thin air throughout the years and we try to get hold of him. Yeah, he was a bit like the other fella, Ben Murdoch. My he was the same. He was always running away for us. I want to remember that time he <laughs> fell over that tea trolley. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he tried to backdoor Rob and ended up tripping over someone, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, he was a good lad, though. He, he, yeah, he was, he was a really nice fella. But so was Josh Jones. I mean, yeah, 
he's I think he's a bit of a shy lad, wasn't he? But mm. real gentleman, and he's he's one of those Rob that every time he's come back to Salford, he's always let on to me and you, and we stood loitering waiting for interviews. And and, and other players are the same. Um, uh, who was it the other week? George Griffin when he yeah, was yeah. the caster of the week come over and said hello and. So do other players. They sort of bend your face, don't they? And, that, and and I think that's what the good thing about rugby league. We've had some really good players at Salford, and uh, you know when they move on, they move on. But I think somebody people always say it, don't they, on Facebook and that once a red, always a red. And I think once you play for Salford, I think there's always a bit of your heart there because the supporters are so loyal on that. And I think you know it means a lot to players that doesn't because there's certain clubs where players will go and they'll be like. Um, a small fish in a big pond, if you like, particularly somewhere like Wigan, where you get cast aside and you get forgotten. But I think at a place like Salford, it's a bit more sort of intricate, isn't it? And not uh, intricate is the wrong word I'm looking for, but um, what's the word I'm looking for? Intimate is the word I'm looking mm. for. Um, where, where you're in a smaller club and you're loved a bit more, aren't you? I think Jackson Aces was a prime example of that. You know, at Salford, he was he was idolised, wasn't he? At Wigan, perhaps they, they I don't know, they, they didn't appreciate him as much as what we do. Yeah, great player. Really, you know, I say some special moments in his over shirt, and we uh, wish him well uh, in his uh, retirement. So that's all the news, and now we'll see what's happening in the world of rugby league with White Sides World of Rugby League. So that was White Sides World of Rugby League, and now we'll look forward to the big games this weekend. So we'll start with our ladies. They are in uh, playoff semi final action away at Lee Twist Lane on Sunday, 2 pm kickoff at uh, Parker. Um, narrow defeat last time at Lee, uh, but they're going to be confident going to this contest. Yeah, well, it's all or nothing, isn't it? You know, winner takes all in in, in this, and uh, we, you know, it's something they built for in the season. Um, as I've said every week, that we we need to we need to start well. We can get we can get on top early. We always finish strong, um, so we can stay in the game. I mean, it's got to be tough. Let's not you know make any bones about that. Being away at Lee. You know, it's, it's not going to be great, but um, it just show. I mean, the, the thing is for me, it's, it's the progress that we've made. We're in the playoffs now in this this league. Who knows where it could lead? You know, we 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 could get a result, and then you, you know we're moving on again. We're one step, you know, away from from the actual Super League. I mean, that's unbelievable for this 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 group of, of girls who've been together, you know, no time at all. Uh, but it is a big game. It's going to be a big challenge. But we've had a week off. You know, so hopefully we can get a few bodies back, um, which has been our problem all year, I think. And and just go for it. Just nothing to lose. Don't leave anything, you know, in the changing room. Just leave it out on the pitch and see what happens. But no matter what, it's been another, you know, another successful year for them. Yeah. Obviously, you know, semi-final uh, rugby, uh, Paul. There is there is pressure in that. In that, uh, we went through a, a sort of a, a playoff process last season, getting to sort of the grand final, which ended in defeat. But you know, in going into this one, not as much pressure on because Lee are, are the you know the favourites. They're at home. Um, it's all on them to perform. Yeah, of course, it is. You, you're the um, the underdogs, if you like, really, aren't you? Like you said, the pressure on the home side, they're the high, higher in the table, they're probably expected to win. So you just, like you say, you just go out there and, and, and play your game, don't you? And sometimes you can be dangerous. I mean, you'll probably see, I think last weekend, there was a, I think Newcastle have been relegated and they went and turned Barrow over because the shackles are off, so to speak, aren't they? Because you've got that less pressure. Look at Wakefield in the, the men's this, this week, they've been relegated. They play all KR. They could they could turn them over. You don't really know, do you? So no, I think the ladies have got to approach this and just just go for it. Just go for it and, and just see what happens because pressure's off you. And you know it's the same for us against Catalan, the, the men's team. Just go for it this weekend. I don't like the same free hit. I don't agree with that, but I think you've just got to sometimes just just back your instincts and just see where it takes you. Yeah, I think that with the danger for for Lee Parker will come from Rihanna Burke. Emma Knowles and Alicia Derbyshire. They're the pivots in their line. Um, everything went through them three. Um, if we can close them down, um, you know, it, it gives us opportunity to, to, to punish them. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, they've got they've got a lot of experienced girls there at Lee. Girls who have been playing the game a long time, know, know the game inside out. And, and it's something that have probably played at a little bit of a higher level uh, as well. So... It's a massive test for our girls, but we, we know what to expect. We've you know we've been there through the season now. We've played against these teams. We know their strengths and weaknesses. Nothing will be a shock 
You know, there's no, you know, she, she's caught us out because she, you know, we, we didn't expect her to be that good. We know exactly what we're facing. And I'm sure they've done the work, you know, in training in the last week or so. Like I said, he had that week off, so that would give him a chance to, to relax, but concentrate on this, study, study the opposition. And, and fingers crossed, you know, we, we found weaknesses in, in there from the last time we played. And, mm. you know, you do learn. Uh, I'll, I'll go back to 2019 with the, with the men's team and the, we went to Wigan in the playoffs and we got beat. And I remember coming out of that ground saying, we've took more out of that game than they did. Even though we yeah. lost, we learned a lot about Wigan that day. And we went back a week later, well, two weeks later, sorry, and we all know what happened. So, yeah, it could, it could be a benefit for us. And, it, you know, if anything, Lee may underestimate us a little bit. Um, so it's going to be good. I'm, I'm hoping, I am hoping to get there. Um, there are plans for me to be out and about on Saturday. So, fingers crossed, uh, I, can, I can go down my hope a few others can, can make the trip. Yeah, exciting times uh, for, for our ladies. Another, just move forward, move on to, to Paul Rowley's men. Uh, one of our ladies, Darcy Price, is representing Jamaica uh, in the next week or so, um, playing the USA and Canada. I think she's set off, uh, was it yesterday, uh, with the Jamaica s- squad, which is pretty amazing, isn't it, Parky? Obviously, one of our, our ladies oh. representing the country. Uh, I mean, it, to, to represent your country must be must be the biggest buzz you can get. I can't imagine, you know, the the pride that you would feel. But I mean, I don't know where it's taking place. This, but I mean, I'm sure I, I, if I was there, hoping it's taking place in Jamaica. I mean, that'd be a, I mean, a nice little fillet at the end of the season. But <laughs> so, no, uh, she's yeah. I mean, fully fully deserved. And uh, I know uh, Jamaica. I think I remember them playing last year. Did they play in something in the World Cup last year? Mm. Um, and they had some real athletes. They they lacked a little bit of, you know, rugby league uh, smarts, if you like. But I think it's something they're going to develop, and it's great for us to be part of that. Yeah, it's the, they're playing in the UWI Moana Bowl. So I think it's in America. I think, but we'll keep our eye on it and see if she 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 plays uh, Paul. But you know what, like Parky said, well, you know what, she even played for your country, and uh, obviously being a red as well. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It just um, it just shows you how much progress we're making, doesn't it? You know, getting picked to play international <laughs> rugby league. I mean, after what twelve months, eighteen months playing for Salford. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I just hope more ladies can follow, more more girls can follow the example as well. So, uh, so yeah, how, how exciting is that? I mean, to be travelling abroad as well, playing rugby league. It's, it don't get any better than that. You're living the dream, aren't you? Yeah. So good luck to her as well. Uh, we'll uh, we'll see how that plays out. So let's move on to Friday night and Paul Rowley's men. They are at home to Catalan Dragons. Um, must win uh, and rely on other fixtures and other results, uh, Paul, to get us over the line into the playoffs. Yeah, I've said it all week. I don't think you can look at um, Warrington and Huddersfield. Just let them do what they want. We've got to beat Catalans and then worry about that afterwards. You've got a job to do first, and that job is a massive task. You look at the way Catalans played last weekend against uh, against Leeds. They absolutely blew them away, and they're hitting form again at the right time. They're not going to take it easy on us because they're gunning for top spot. They've been top for most of the season. They've lost the top spot, and I think they want to win that league leader shield, and they've got a chance because they've got a better points difference, I think, than St. Helens. Um, the points difference is worse than Wigan's, but Wigan have got to play Lee, which is a tough game away from home, so there's a chance that Wigan could get beat. So, Catalans have got a job to do as well. So, we've just got to go and play our game. If we win that game and Warrington win their game, good luck to Warrington. But you can't start looking at Warrington's score until you've got yours sorted. So, we've just got to focus on them, because Catalans will not be easy. No. Catalan Dragons uh, hammered lead 61-0. Uh, last week, uh, Parky. Obviously, we talked about Leeds last week and what's going on there. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if Catalan um, can get to that level again. Because you know, sometimes you you put a big score on teams and you you, you end up blowing yourself out. Yeah, possibly. I mean, the, the other thing is they'll they'll think back to when they came here early in the season um, and that missed that conversion in the last minute cost mm. them the game. It was a tough game, but. They want a little bit of revenge. They're they're a really really good team all over the park. They, they, I don't see a weakness in in Catalan at the moment. Um, I don't think they'll win the league, but they can certainly do themselves a favour and, and and finish second. You know for for the for the playoffs, which is you know it's going to be a massive thing for them. Um, 
But I've got I've got to say, looking at the fixtures, I think Saints will turn Hull over. Um, so it's hard to play for. It'd be great if Catalan had no pressure on him. You know, and he could just come over here, rest a couple of players, get ready for the playoffs, you know, whatever. But uh, it's not going to be that way. But, it's a, you know, this is why we're in the Super League. And if we do if we do win, and, and Huddersfield and, you know, our former manager and other ex-players do us a favour, um, we'll have to play probably Catalan again or Saints or, whatever, or, you know, whoever away from home. This is what it's all about. This is why you're in it, these big games. So, we, this is, you know, this could be... If things go for us, this could be the you know the the, the sort of the, the 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 perfect game for us going into the playoffs. You know, it gets you ready for that. This is this is again like we just said about the girls. This is do or die. There's, there's nothing after this if we if we if we lose, we might even win and get nothing after this. But we've got to go out and just throw everything at them and give give just give them hell uh, and make sure that they know that you know they're in a the game. But it's it's going to be very very tough. But We've got, you know, a half-decent record against them. And sometimes they don't travel the best a Friday night. I don't know what their travel arrangements are this week. They obviously have to change them because it, all the fixtures got moved to Friday. I think it should have been a Sunday. Whether that's had any effect, you know, on the training for this week, I don't know. But, um, you know, we've got to try and use every bit of advantage we can. Hopefully the weather will play ball for us. Uh, not being 40 degrees like it is when you go over there, you know, it's... Uh, Oh, they'll be windy and wet and they'll they'll not like it. So, uh, it, you know, it's interesting, but we're in it. It's the last game of the season, the regular game of the season, and we're still in the running for the playoffs. And I keep saying it, and I've said it every week, Salford fans need to realise, you know, for what we are and who we are, this is massive. We are, mm. we've done, we've, what we're achieving at the moment is way above what, what realistically, you know, we, people think we can. And once again, if we do finish sixth, Brilliant. We've got a playoff game. The season extends. You know, we get a little bit more into the season. Otherwise, there's a long gap in between now and February. But if we don't, I'm still going to be, you know, I'm still going to be proud of the lads for what they've achieved this year. That, as I said last week, there's some big clubs with a lot of money below us um, who can't get to where we can get with with the, the lack of resource that we've got. People knock us every week. You, you know, you've got no money. You don't have the fans. You can't do this. You don't hold your ground. You, Still in the playoffs at this stage, but that'll do for me. Weather report for Friday, Paul. Yeah, let's have a butchers. Paul's uh, Parky wants uh, wind and he wants driving rain. If you can. Well, my phone set for uh, Chadderton where I live, so let's have a look at Salford for Friday night. It's going to rain Friday. Oh, highs, of fif- highs of 15 and lows of 8. It's going a bit cooler, isn't it? It's. Mm-hmm. Uh, not what it was you think a couple of weeks ago it was boiling wasn't it but um but no i don't know it's the pitch is always immaculate so but anyway with it rain snows off it's sun shining so in the picture we're in good condition but i think we just need a fast start rob don't we We need a fast start you know come out and uh, you know give the supporters a real good send-off because i think I said to you on the radio on sunday it, when you play that last game of the season whether you, you know, if you win that game, even if you don't make the playoffs, you win that game, people go home happy, and they remember that then for the the cold sort of November, December months, because you, you that's your memory then to to last year all you know through Christmas and that. So so yeah, let's let's go off with a bang, beat Catalan, and whatever happens at, at Warrington or Huddersfield happens, but we do our job and win the game, and if we get a shot at the playoffs, we get a shot at the playoffs, but uh, but no, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Yeah, I spoke to Christian Inu uh, in the pre-match press conference and this is what he had to say. So that was Christian Inu talking to me in the pre-match press conference. Uh, Parquet, prediction time. Uh, what's your thoughts? Well, it, it, the, the only sort of downside at the moment is this these rumours of this illness or virus or whatever it is in the camp and it, it depends on how many bodies we can put out there that's going to gonna affect us. Um, if if, however, there's, you know, it's a bit of a ruse or whatever, I don't know, Paul Rowley's been good at that in the past. Um, and we do have more or less a fully fit team out there as much as we can. The players will know what's on this. They'll know that, I mean, you know, that, that last Saturday night wasn't wasn't what they wanted and wasn't perhaps as good as, you know, so they'll have worked on it this week, hopefully. Um, 
And I'm going to say it's going to be a nail bite of a, of a last uh, a last day of the season for us. Um, I'm going to put us down for a win. Just, I'm going to say 22 20. Okay. But I'm actually going to say that Warrington are going to be Huddersfield on a golden point drop goal. Now, well, I can imagine. I'd have to be, I'd have to find a bucket to be sick in. I think that'll happen. I think, I just think that's that's been our luck this year. I think it's just mm. everything that's happened to us uh, throughout the season. That's just, that would be typical for us. Paul, have you got anything that's uh, more glorious? I don't have to be sick in a bucket if it happens. No, I think they'll both get beat. I think Warrington will get beat. I'm going to get beat. But <laughs> no, uh, do you know what? I think Warrington will get trumped off Huddersfield because I, I think they're gone. I don't think the supporters want it. I don't think their players want it. I don't think they're bothered. I think they just want to write the season off. Um, my prediction for Salford, I think we'll win. Um, he's very close to Parky's prediction, actually. I've had 24 22 in my head all week, so I'm going to go with that. 24 22. Um, I'm going for drama. Uh, like Parky said, we'll be people with transistor radios attached to their ears <laughs> with about 20 minutes to go, listening to see what we're, what we're going to do in Huddersfield. Um, I'm going to go Salford 30, Catalan 28, and uh, it'll be a Max Need conversion with about two minutes to go, which puts us in the playoffs, Parky. Yeah, I could see that. We usually do have fairly high-scoring games against them, I think. Mm. Um, we've had a few in the past, so that wouldn't surprise me, especially the way that both teams attack. You know, um, I mean, the, the, the thing is with Catalan there, I mean, you look at their wingers in, in Davies and, and Johnson. I mean, wow. Two, mm. two of the best in the league. And, and both British, which is, which is fantastic. Uh, Sam Tompkins, again, you know, it's the last time we'll see him. Um, play the uh, the Salford Stadium so uh, I'm sure he'll get the usual um, respect from the from the, the South Stand um, but I, I must say what a player he's been by the way an absolute worldy at times and you know I think um, I think the older he's got the better he's got um, but yeah so they've got pace they've got skill uh, and they've got power up front um, it's going to be a you know a massive massive challenge but like I say we've just got to go out there and just throw everything at them Final thoughts, Paul? Yeah, I've, I've read a lot this week about people saying, oh, it's going to be tough and this, that and the other, but you want it tough, don't you? If you get in the playoffs, you're not going to get an easy game in the playoffs. You're not going to say, yeah, hey, you beat Catalan, you can have a free ride to the grand final, though. <laughs> you've got you've got to play it tough every week, haven't you? If you want to win trophies and win, you know, top flight rugby league trophies, you've got to beat the best. So there's no point in, in trying to hide. You've got to go out there and do the business, haven't you? So if we beat Catalans, we might have to go over there and beat them. Say what, you beat them over there, though. Say that that, that happened, then you won game from a grand final. The mm. way the playoffs work now, you've got to win two matches. Look at last season, we beat Huddersfield, and, and you're there. You're almost there, aren't you? So, um, you know, a lot can happen in a, in a couple of weeks. You don't know. You, you beat Catalan, you go over there, they get a man sent off, it's thunderstorms. God knows what happens. Jack Armourage scores an hat-trick and Salford win the game. So you don't know what's going to happen, do you? You don't know. So, uh, so I, I like the Paul Rowley way. Take each game as it comes. Let, let's get Friday night out of the way, then we can concentrate on getting panic flights over to France because that's going to be difficult, isn't it? Getting a flight over there at a week's notice. Yeah, in <laughs> September. Imagine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. I want to say, like, say it's a, it's a learning experience in it for for both, you know, our ladies and 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 men's team. You know, big games, you know, big characters come alive, don't they? And uh, you know, somebody who's who's going to be wearing that red shirt um, on on Friday and on Sunday, you know, could be a hero, could make themselves a hero on on Sunday by producing a, a performance that that takes their team into a into a into a playoff or or a playoff grand final. So, that's the end of this week's uh, podcast. Another great show, uh, Parker. Uh, we managed to break our exciting news about mm-hmm. us, our shortlisted uh, nomination in the British Independent Podcast Awards. Like I said, nominated in the best independent sports podcast and the best jingle 2023. Uh, I want to say a big thanks to all our listeners for listening and uh, enjoying the show and supporting us. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's that's... Still knocked me a little bit. That I don't, I don't think it's sunk in yet. That um, no, uh, you know, like we, we thank everybody every week, not just for listening, but for everything you know they do. And 
the contributions and everything else. And it's just, you know, it's a pleasure for us to do it. It's, you know, we just get to talk talk about Salford. I mean, God, I could do it all day and all night if I, if I had a chance. Um, but I'd probably get beaten up. Um, but yeah, no, just, you know, thanks. And I mean, that news is, I don't know, it's something, something special. And, like like the ladies' team, and hopefully like the men's team, we, we're achieving something that uh, I don't think any of us expected. So uh, yeah, no, brilliant. Thanks, you know, thanks to everyone for tuning in again. Yeah, another great show. Like Parky said, Paul, it kind of blows your mind. You know, the the, the journey that we're on, really, the club uh, as well as as us, this podcast. Yeah, I'm just glad people like it, Rob. <clears throat> I'm just glad they like listening to us. And I'm gonna lose my voice. Okay, like emotional, crying. No, no. <laughs> Bit of a frog. I need another cup of tea, mate. That's what it is. No, I'm just, I'm just glad that people like the show and and they, and they enjoy it. And uh, I think it, it has been a good show the last few years, hasn't it? And I've really, really enjoyed doing it and enjoyed chatting to you guys and that. And I think it's a real sort of close knit club, Salford, isn't it? And I think people appreciate what we're doing. We appreciate what they're doing. Everybody gets along, don't they? So, uh, so no, I, I really enjoy doing it. And let's hope we can keep making it bigger and better. Yeah. Don't forget, if you want to support supporters, you can via the Kofi. You know, click on our uh, socials. You'll find it on there. Every penny goes to the programs uh, to help us produce this uh, fine podcast that you're listening to uh, today. So, big thanks for joining us on this week's Devil in the Detail. Arbor Parking fans on Facebook, Devil in the Detail SRD. Fans on Twitter at DITD SRD. And fans on SoundCloud, iTunes, Radio Contact, Spotify, and YouTube. Good luck, Reds. We'll see you on the other side. <laughs>